Hey guys, Molten here and welcome back to the channel. So I want to create this video for those of you who are considering playing the Sicilian for the first time, but maybe you're put off by it's too much theory or it looks quite difficult to learn, or maybe there's just too many variations and you're not sure which one to choose, in which case I would suggest you go first take a look at the Sicilian tier list video where I go through all the different options. Of course you can play anything you want, but to simplify your choices, I'm going to suggest what I think is the easiest Sicilian to learn, in my opinion. And if you stick around to the end, you should have a complete repertoire to play against the open Sicilian. So I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you very soon. Okay, so the Sicilian variation I'm going to teach you is called the O'Kelly. And the reason why I believe it works really, really well is because most of your opponents, especially at the lower level, will do one or two things. They'll either completely avoid your Sicilian on move 2 by playing like c3 or knight c3 or g3, in which case you don't really have to worry about it. Or they'll play the move knight to f3 followed by pawn to d4, which goes into an open Sicilian. And this variation works particularly well against the open Sicilian, so that's exactly what we're looking for. And it's also an opening that can be played on all levels. It's not just for the lower level. It's been played by top players like Artemeyev and Hu Yifan to name a few. So after knight f3, this variation starts out with the move pawn to a6, a very tricky waiting move by black. The idea is that we're waiting for white to play the move pawn to d4 and enter into an open Sicilian, after which we take the pawn. Knight takes. We follow up with knight f6, hitting the pawn on e4. White can't push it because there's always queen a5 check, forking the king and pawn on e5. So white will play the move knight to c3. And here the whole point is that we don't didn't move the e-pawn, so we can play the move e5, hitting the knight right away in one go. And now the white knight has four choices to choose from. So we'll start with the move knight to f5. After this one, black can hit out in the center with the move pawn to d5, and already black is totally fine. So we're attacking the pawn, we're also attacking this knight on f5 with the bishop. So if we can take the knight next move, we'll get two pawns in the center. We're also threatening to play d4 and advance our pawn in some situations. The next option is knight d to e2. After this, we should follow with the move bishop to c5. So if you can bring the bishop out to c5 or b4 in this line, it's a lot more active than keeping the bishop, say, behind the pawn on d6. And this is the whole point of this variation. Here, for example, if white plays a casual move like pawn to h3, trying to stop knight to g4, then already queen b6 here is completely winning for black, hitting the pawn f2, which is not possible for white to defend without losing some material. Instead, a better move would be knight to g3, but then we can play the move pawn to d6, and let's say bishop e2. Black is very, very comfortable here. We can play h6 to stop bishop g5 if we wish, and we just play a very natural Sicilian, but we don't have any problems with um, our piece development. A popular option for white here is to play knight to b3. And black should immediately put pressure on the pawn on e4 by playing the move bishop to b4 here. A natural development is bishop to d3. And here black has two options. One is to play d5 and just hit out in the center right away. This is perfectly fine to play. But the one I prefer is bishop takes c3. And after pawn takes, just playing d6. Castles, castles. And the plan here for black is really straightforward. What you want to do is develop your pieces, let's say bishop to e6, the knight would go to d7, the queen will slide to c7, and then we'll develop our pieces in a manner to put pressure on the pawns on the c-file. So we'll play either b6 or b5, and then we'll just put a lot of pressure attacking these weaknesses. If ever white plays the move pawn to f4, then we always have the e5 square for our knight as well. And the last option for white here to play is knight to f3, after which we should put immediate pressure by playing bishop to b4 again. If bishop to d2, then black can just play pawn to d6, and we just have an improved version of a typical knight of Sicilian, where the bishop is already outside the pawn chain and far more active than it usually would be. If instead white chooses 
to take the pawn on e5, then we can play the move queen to e7 and try to win the pawn back immediately. But I suggest it's easier just to castle here. And after, let's say, bishop to d3. White can also play the move queen to d4, actually. After this, we can take the knight on c3. Queen takes, knight takes e4. And black will win the piece back because of the pressure along the e-file. So we can just play the move rook to e8 here. And let's say white takes it. We can play the move pawn to d5 even. Attacking the queen. The queen moves and then knight to c6 will win the piece back on the e5 square. If queen takes f7, we just go king h8. And the king is wide open in the center. If instead white goes bishop to d3, then we can continue with the move pawn to d5, immediately hitting out in the center again. White can't dream of taking the pawn because he runs into all sorts of problems along this open e file. And if castles king side, then we can play the move queen to c7, immediately putting pressure on these knights. If the knight goes back, he has to deal with pawn takes e4 as well as bishop g4 and bishop takes c3 threats. And if he plays the move bishop to f4 here, which seems like a natural move, then black can already win a piece in this position with the move bishop to d6. And there's no real way for white to defend. The best way I can find is to play knight takes d5. And after knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, he has to play bishop takes h7 here. The natural queen to h5 which looks like it's attacking h7 and e5, doesn't quite work because black can play the move pawn to f5 here, and this blocks the defense of the bishop on d3, and black is doing totally fine. So white should start out with bishop takes h7, king takes queen h5 check, king g8, bishop takes e5, but I think black can just play queen takes c2, and we do have some development issues here, but I don't think the attack is strong enough for white and black should be able to finish his development and um, utilize his extra material here. White can also play bishop to c4, after which I suggest you play queen to c7, bishop goes back, d6, castles, and again, just take on c3, pawn takes and castles and play against these weaknesses on the queen side and white to damage pawn structure is the most straightforward plan that I can see here for black. So if pawn to d4 isn't the best move for white on move 3, then what is? Well, I think it's pawn to c3 or pawn to c4, but I don't think many of your opponents are going to play this unless they specifically know what they're doing or they've watched this video, which is probably unlikely. So let's start off the move pawn to c4. So after pawn to c4, we can go into a hedgehog structure. If you know the hedgehog, you can go into it, but I'm assuming we don't. So let's avoid any hedgehog structures by playing the move knight to c6. After white plays d4, our idea is to take it. Knight takes and just play the move pawn to e5 immediately, hitting this knight. If the knight takes our knight, then we'll take back with the b pawn and where very very happy here as black the bishop will develop to the c5 square if the knight instead retreats let's say to c2 then black will play the move bishop to c5 followed by d6 and the knight will go to the e7 square followed by castles and this is fairly comfortable development for black also, if the white knight goes to the f5 square, then black can play the move pawn to d6. We're already attacking the knight and threatening to take it. We, all, we also can play the move pawn to g6 to get rid of this knight and develop our bishop to g7. And I think this is perfectly fine for black as well. So let's say bishop to g7, followed by knight to f6 or knight to e7, and black will castle his queen side with ideas of f5 perhaps. So what I think is the best move for white here is pawn to c3, transposing back into a c3 Sicilian. And white's saying, 
essentially that black has wasted time with this move pawn to a6 which isn't useful so he's going to go back into this variation but players like Artemeyev have shown that it's still although it's slightly worse it's still playable for black even at a very high level and he's held his own against strong opposition like Vichy Anand captures captures d4 and black should continue with the move bishop to g4 here bringing the piece outside to a very active square let's say bishop to e2 black will continue with pawn to a6 castles knight f6 so the whole point of black's development is that we're waiting on white and not capturing on d4 so that white can play the move knight to c3 so instead we're just going to develop our knight to the d7 square instead now white's at a crossroad because he doesn't want to play the move knight to d2 if he plays knight to d2 then black will just take on d4 and then develop his remaining piece and black will be totally fine there so he wants to chase the queen and develop the knight to the c3 square where it's slightly more active and here for example we can drop the queen back to d6 knight c3 we can take on d4 as a few games have been played here we can trade off these bishops and play the move bishop to e7 not queen c7 which would be hit by knight to d5 there and here i believe that black is doing perfectly okay let's say after rook to d1 then we can drop the queen back to the c7 square followed by casting our king um, to safety next so that concludes our look into the O'Kelly Sicilian if you enjoyed this video and want to see more opening videos like this one drop a like or comment down below thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next one